Hello, welcome back on my YouTube channel. In my last video, I've demonstrated how to create wedge buffers using pictures taken with merging maps in the field. This can, however, also be done on the fly and also in such a way that you can see the wedge buffers in merging maps on the mobile phone app. I'll demonstrate that in this video. Let's first install the merging plugin from the plugins manager. After installing the plugin, you can find it in the browser panel. Click right and choose Configure. There, enter the credentials of your account. Click Test Connection to see if your credentials are OK. You can also save the credentials to your QGIS uh, password manager. After logging in, I have access to the projects on the Merging Maps Cloud. Under Explore, I can find the public projects, and the developers of Merging Maps have a very nice example project for reading EXIF data from cameras that we need in our project. So I click right and choose Clone to add this to my own account. And then I can find this project in the browser panel under My Projects. Then I can choose Download to use it locally. And I can open the project. I'm going to use the app in a different uh, area, on a wadden island in the Netherlands called Ameland, where I'm going tomorrow. So I'm using the locator bar to locate Ameland, and I find it here. And I'm going to use the extent of the island, of the map canvas, uh, for our project in the app. So go to the project menu, and in the project properties, First, you can check the settings under Merge in Maps and adjust it to your needs. You can enable here Selective Sync. You can change the quality of the photos that are stored in the project or uh, snapping options. Here I keep everything as default. Under View Settings, you can set the extent of the project that will be taken over by the app. I choose here the Map Canvas extent. But I noticed that my project is still in EPSG 3857, while I prefer to have my project in the Dutch projection. So I'm going to change the projection of the project. I use 28992, and I set the on the fly reprojection to Amersfoort New. Just to be sure, I'm going to set the extent to these new coordinates in the project projection. Note that the coordinates taken with the Merging Maps app are in uh, Latitude Longitude Geographic Coordinate System, but when we load the project, it will be on the fly reprojected to the projection of this project. The cloned project comes with the backdrop of OpenStreetMap, but I would also like to demonstrate how to add another backdrop, um, and I'm going to use here the PDOC Services plugin, which is a plugin to access Dutch uh, GIS layers, and um, it adds this button, and there I can find an actual aerial photograph uh, orthophoto with 8 cm resolution in WMS format. So I'm adding this to the project. And let's zoom in so you can see the details. So in the field I have an internet connection, so I can uh, use this layer. Now let's uh, change the order of the layers. And I'm going to uh, make map themes. Uh, presets of layers that I want to show. So I'm going to add a theme where I just have the survey layer, which is called data, and the aerial photograph layer, and I call this map theme aerial photograph. And I create another map theme with the survey layer and OpenStreetMap, and I call that one OpenStreetMap. Now you'll see later that merging maps on the mobile phone will take over these uh, map themes, so we can switch between the two easily. But you can also do that in your QGIS project, as I demonstrate here. So let's now check the attribute table to see which fields come in this cloned project. And we see that this has uh, FID, uh, the picture, uh, path, and uh, some of this EXIF data that we need. To see how this works, we have to look at uh, the layer properties attribute forms. And there we can see how this has been set up. In the form layout, there's the FID field. Where's the photo field? 
And let's uh, change it to an uh, image viewer so we can also see uh, an example of the image in the attribute table form view later. There's direction, you see it's a range widget type with a slider. And it uses here uh, a function to read the EXIF direction data from the picture. The same is for latitude and longitude coordinates. They also use these functions to read the coordinates from the picture, from the EXIF information, the metadata of the picture. And there's similar fields to get direction, latitude and longitude and the date from the GPS. I'm going to demonstrate if you want to add another uh, field, for example, to take some notes with the picture. So I toggle to uh, editing mode and I add a new field. I call it notes. And I change it to uh, text type. And I give the amount of characters. Let's change it to 100. And I toggle off editing and save the new field. Then I go back to the layer properties and I'm going to add the notes field to the form layout by dragging it there and I can put it in the position where I want it, but I want it at the bottom. And I choose a multi-line uh, text widget so we can take enough notes if necessary. And I can give an alias for the fields. So I can call the FID the observation number. The app will show the alias. Now we need to create a, a nice style for these data survey points. So I toggle on the layer styling panel. And what we're going to do is create a symbol, uh, an SVG marker for the camera and to use the rotation and a wedge buffer by using a geometry generator. So let's first choose the SVG marker. And when we want to use SVG markers in uh, merging maps, we need to uh, store the SVG in the project folder. So I'm going to browse to the folder of these uh, SVG files that come with QGIS and there's one called camera.svg and I'm going to copy this one and I paste it in uh, the folder of this project. So it will be later synchronized uh, with the cloud. Um, therefore it's important that you really have the SVG file in the folder. Let's uh, make it a bit bigger. We can later uh, tweak it. Now let's change the color of the SVG marker. And let's use this color. And I would like to have the symbol rotated with the direction field. I'm going to use here the numeric direction field. I'm going to add an extra style layer and then move it to the bottom. I'm going to use a geometry generator for that layer. And that is what our polygon with the wedge buffer will be. And I'm going to write an expression. I'm going to search for wedge buffer, which is a function. And here in the right panel, you can find an explanation. It needs center, azimuth, width, outer radius. So let's formulate our expression. Center should be equal to the geometry, so the, the point. And here you see an example. Then azimuth. That's the angle uh, for the middle of the wedge to uh, the point. And I'm going to use there the direction. Then there's the width. Make that 45 degrees. I set the outer radius to 0 0.0008 degrees. Click OK. And now I'm going to change the simple fill here to a, a shape burst fill. And I'm going to use two colors with some opacity so can we still see uh, what's below. And from that uh, reddish kind of color to white, which is uh, completely transparent. Change to a set distance. You can modify uh, the blur strength. 
we can uh, play with this uh, when we see the results. So I'm going to just add a point to see how it's now going to look like. And there I can use the direction slider to set the direction. And there I see the rotated camera and uh, the wedge buffer. And that looks already quite nice. So you can play with the, the variables to uh, change the looks. So I'll toggle off editing and choose discard to remove also our example point. We'll save the project I click synchronize and then it shows me the changes. And obviously our online layers uh, are not synchronized, but uh, they're just loaded on the mobile phone. So here I go to the mobile phone to merge in maps and under projects, I find their Ameland and I uh, synchronize and then I go to the home screen and I can load the project. And there I can see it. And uh, let's first test those uh, map themes. So I can choose here between the aerial photograph and um, OpenStreetMap. And when I zoom in, uh, it shows me all the details from the online uh, layer. Now I'm going to add a point. Of course, this is a demonstration just from the inside. And uh, this is how the field form looks like. I'm going to take a picture here just of my screen. Click OK. And you see it fills in all this uh, EXIF data. I can uh, make some notes here. It warns me that I still need to fill in something and that is this uh, observation number. Auto generate uh, does not work here. So I need to uh, fill in a number. Otherwise it doesn't accept it. And here on the fly it shows me the direction of uh, the picture. Of course not very accurate because I'm inside. But uh, this is exactly what I uh, wanted to achieve. So I can now synchronize it back with uh, the cloud. So we can also see this observation in uh, QGIS. So in QGIS I click on the synchronize button. It shows me uh, the differences. And it will download the observation point. And I'll find it in the attribute table. If I go to uh, the form view, I can see there uh, the field form with also the preview of the picture. But I need to tweak a little bit uh, the widgets. I see here the file name that's not so nice to see and all this EXIF data is also not so interesting. And let's uh, have a look here at uh, the point and how it looks like in QGIS. There's the point. Remove the selection and when I zoom in I see there the watch buffer. So I'm going to remove a few of the fields that I don't want to show to the user in the form. It will be uh, stored in the attribute table, but not uh, as a form uh, view. But let's have a look at our form. And uh, I would still like to tweak it. I'm going to add a new uh, field. Because I also want to have uh, the date in a readable form stored. I can also choose date and time, but here I'll choose only uh, date. And I would like to get rid of the file name. So I go here after saving. And I add the date by dragging it to the position where I want it. So after the picture. And for the picture, I don't want to show the path. So I'm going to uncheck this box. And for the date, I see it's already in the day, month, year format. So I keep it like that. And for the default, I use a dollar now to show the current date and every time observation is updated it will also update the current date i give alias date and um, i'm giving here uh, the aliases in the same capital uh, first character and i'm going to change here in the layer settings the display um, so that will control how we will see um, a preview uh, in the app. So what I would like to see is uh, the observation number and the date and uh, a preview of the picture. So I can control that with an expression. I add here a string observation number and I concatenate that with the field 
FID. Then I concatenate it with a new line. And then on the second line, I would like to see the date. So I use a string date and I concatenate that with uh, the date field. And then to create that uh, picture, I need to uh, create an expression here. And if you use hash image, it knows it has to show the image. And then you need to tell where the image is stored. And it starts with a uh, file, colon, and three slashes. And then it needs to know the folder, and that's a variable, so I can click here on expression. And then under variables, I can find their project folder. And I can click insert to add it there to the file name. And to complete the path, I also need the name of uh, the file of the image, which is stored in the image field. So under fields and values, I can uh, find there the uh, photo field, which has the path of the picture. As you can see there in the example. And I also insert this expression. So we now have the path to the folder and the file name of the picture. I can save the project and uh, synchronize it. And here on the mobile phone app, I can also synchronize. And I'll add a new point. It warns that the GPS accuracy is uh, low, but it's just uh, to demonstrate. Point number two, take a picture. And it uh, shows the direction, the coordinates, and I can take notes and it hides all the other fields. And there I see the wedge buffer. Now to show uh, what this preview does, when I click on it, it shows uh, the picture, but we have added a few uh, fields so I can better choose the new point. And there you see observation number and the date and the little picture. Let's synchronize and see how this looks like in uh, QGIS. Let me synchronize it there. And there's our second point. In the attribute table, I can see there all the fields. You see for the new point that it also shows the um, observation number and date expression. Now I'm going to remove the two points because those were examples. I save it, attribute table is empty. And I synchronize, and then uh, tomorrow I can use it uh, on my mobile phone to uh, map pictures uh, that I take uh, in Ameland. And uh, after the weekend, I can see the results here.